In this video, we're going to review the parts of the eye. The first model that we're going to look at is going to focus on the muscles of the eye. So what you're looking at here is the posterior aspect of the eye. Here you have the optic nerve leaving the eye. And what I want you to notice is it leaves the eye more medially. And if you think about it, when you learned about the optic nerve and how both optic nerves from each eye come towards each other and, and make an X there, that optic chiasm. So one way to tell the medial portion of the eye is the optic nerve. This is going to be important because you have to be able to determine the difference between medial and lateral when looking at the different muscles of the eye. So up here we have the superior rectus muscle. Here we see part of and the tendon of the superior oblique. And oblique is going to be on an angle, just like you learned with the uh, external internal obliques of the abdominal area. So this is a part of the superior oblique muscle. Here you have the medial rectus muscle. And again, you look for that optic nerve. And you'll know, remember that optic nerve is going to come medially towards that optic chiasm. So that's going to be your medial rectus. And then over here you can see just a little bit of the lateral rectus. And down at the bottom, you can't see the inferior oblique. or Sorry, you can see the inferior oblique right here. This is the inferior oblique, which you can't see is the inferior rectus muscle. But I'll show you that on the next slide. So this is the inferior oblique. So again, we have the optic nerve, superior rectus, superior oblique, medial rectus, lateral rectus, inferior oblique. Those are the muscles that you can see on this model. Now if we go to the next model, let's start with the muscles again. Here you can't see the optic nerve, so in a test you obviously could look for it, but this is going to be your medial rectus, this is going to be the superior rectus, and this is going to be the inferior rectus. On these you cannot see the obliques, you also can't see the lateral rectus. But again, what you're going to be looking for is that optic nerve to determine the difference. Other structures you can see on this one are the sclera, which is the white part of the eye. Now the conjunctiva, which is very difficult to point to, but the conjunctiva is going to be a layer of tissue that's going to cover that sclera and then actually attach here at the cornea. So the conjunctiva is here. And again, each faculty member will tell you how they're going to test you on that because, again, it's hard to pinpoint on the model because it does cover the sclera. The other uh, structure that you can't see that you're responsible for is the lacrimal apparatus. The lacrimal apparatus is the whole system that produces uh, tears, um, moves the tears along, and then uh, gets rid of the tears or drains the tears. So the lacrimal apparatus is that structure. And again, each faculty member may test you a little differently on that, so you need to make sure you ask them how they're going to do that. What you can see here is you can see the cornea, Okay, this clear covering of the eye, that's the cornea, which in this case is being held on by tape. Uh, underneath, which you think about the colored part of the eye, is the iris, okay, is the iris, and then this hole right here is the pupil, where light will travel into the eye. So again, the cornea is this clear covering here. The iris is what you consider the colored part of the eye. Uh, its, its function actually is to control the size of the pupil, which is where the light will travel through. Now we're going to be looking at the anterior aspect of the eye in detail. So here you can see the cornea. Here you can see the cornea. Here's the lens. Okay, here's the lens. Here's where the pupil is. Okay, you can see that opening. Uh, the structures you need to know are the anterior cavity. The anterior cavity is going to run from the lens back, sorry, from the cornea back to the lens. Okay, from the cornea back to the lens. So this hole is represented by C here. That is the anterior cavity. Within the anterior cavity, you have the anterior chamber and the posterior chamber. So the anterior chamber is going to be from the lens up to the iris. So this area here, that's marked with a B. That is the anterior chamber. The posterior chamber is going to be from the iris back to the lens and it's represented by this F. So the anterior and posterior chambers are within the anterior cavity. Within that anterior cavity flows aqueous humor that is made and recycled. So again, the anterior cavity goes from the lens to the cornea. The anterior chamber within the anterior cavity goes from the lens to the iris, and the posterior chamber goes from the 
iris back to the lens. What you can also see here is you can see part of what's called the choroid layer. And you can see this circled area here and you see these little dots. These little dots are ciliary muscles. Okay, those little dots are ciliary muscles. Down here, down here are the ciliary processes. Okay, these purple structures here are the ciliary processes. So again, you have the ciliary muscle, these little orange dots, and the ciliary processes, which are these purple structures or blue structures, whatever color you're seeing, that are located there. Now we're going to go to a different view of the eye, and you can still see the cornea, you still see the lens, you see the sclera. You now get a better view of the choroid layer, or the choroid, which is this blue structure here. Okay. You also see here we had the anterior cavity with our two chambers. Here, the back part behind the lens, the opening here, is the vitreous chamber. And it contains what's called the vitreous body, and it's a... Uh, it's kind of gel-like, so when you do your sheep eye dissection, you'll see what that looks like. So again, this is the vitreous chamber, the opening here, and it contains the vitreous body. The red layer that you're seeing here is the retina, and it contains the rods and the cones that are the photoreceptors that respond to photons. Uh, you'll learn about functions and how those work uh, more so in lab. So again, in this one, we have the sclera, we have the choroid, and we have the retina. You can still see the ciliary processes here. You've got the lens. You've got the cornea. In here, you can see the anterior cavity. Remember, this whole back area opening here is the vitreous chamber, which contains vitreous body. You can also see on this the optic nerve. Okay, where it leaves the eye. Remember I told you when you were looking at the muscles that one way you can tell whether you're looking at the medial or lateral aspect of the eye is the medial, the optic nerve is going to come out more medially. So here you see the muscle. This is going to be the medial rectus muscle. Again, it's the one closer to that optic nerve as opposed to way over here, right, which is the lateral rectus muscle. Also where the optic nerve leaves the eye, uh, there's the, what's called the optic disc. That optic disc contains no rods and cones, so you actually have a blind spot. Uh, that blind spot, though, is, is kind of buried or taken over by the other eye, so you actually you can't see the blind spot. But you'll probably do an exercise in lab, which will show you how to find that. In our last picture, what you're looking at now is the posterior aspect of the eye. So what you see here is you see the sclera, you see the choroid, again, you see the retina, which has the photoreceptors, rods, and cones. There's an area of the retina that has a much higher concentration of rods, of cones, I should say, of cones. And here, this circled area that you see, this oval right here, that is called the macula lutea. And inside that, and it, you can see a little bit of the dark, I had to cover it so I could point it out well, so you could see it on the uh, practice pictures. But that center part, which is going to be darker, is going to be the central fovea. The macula lutea has the highest concentration of cones. The, the central fovea has an even higher concentration of cones. So within the macula lutea, the central fovea has an even higher concentration of cones. So if you looked at the eye and you could see the front, the pupil would be here. When the light comes back towards here, um, it's going to hit those cones. And so your best sense of your best color vision is when you're looking straight at something. So here again, you have the optic nerve. And this little yellow structure here is the optic disc, disc which again gives you, um, which gives you the blind spot that you will talk about in class. Now, let's look at the sheep eye. I'm sure you all thoroughly enjoyed the dissection of the sheep eye. What we did here is we cut it. We did a cross-section. Okay, we did a cross-section in the frontal, in the frontal plane. Um, what you can see is this outer white la layer, which is the sclera. It's pretty tough, so when you're watching the dissection, you'll see it's difficult to get through that layer. Uh, once you open it, uh, this thin layer right here, which usually gets destroyed in the process of dissection because it's so thin, is the retina. Okay, is the retina. So you'll see this little tan area that contains the rods and cones. Behind it, you'll see, and it's shiny. It's, it's, I think it's a pretty color. It's a pretty blue silver looking. That is your choroid. Um, you can see it here a little bit, but you can also see it better on here. So your three layers are the sclera, 
the choroid in that retina again which a lot of times will get destroyed when you're doing the dissection now here what you've done from the from the anterior portion of the eye you've you've pulled this out and what you've pulled out here okay what you've pulled out here you can see the iris you can see the iris and then that center is the pupil what also will come out is the lens okay and the lens is here and then you see I told you about that vitreous body that comes out of the vitreous chamber that gel will come out sometimes you'll see a bigger blob of it actually gets sep separated from the lens so that's the vitreous body so those are some parts of the sheep eye that you can see I couldn't get a good picture of it because it's hard to visualize it but you can also at, in the posterior aspect of the sheep eye you can see that optic nerve come out of the posterior region um, so you might want to make sure whoever your instructor is goes over that with you okay so we've gone over the parts of the eye so you just need to make sure you review those and you also need to know their functions and then again make sure you're taking the practice test